for the first item is the approval of the agenda by the council. Motion to approve. on, but I can read it correctly, excuse me. It shall be unlawful to remove, damage, destroy, mutilate, or efface any structure, monument, statue, planter, fountain, wall, fence, railing, vehicle, bench, tree, plant, or any other property in any recreation area or facility. It goes on to say how you can't dig out bushes, I won't read all of that. But if you vote to take down or remove a statue or anything on the town common, in my mind, based on what's in our town ordinances, that is a violation of the oath that you all took when you came and sat on this gracious, wonderful organization. That's my point. And if you have a violation of that oath, that, that protects the town common, and I mean, that protects, and you don't do this to protect the town common, then you're in violation of your oath and in the town ordinance. And I don't know how you're going to justify that. No one disputes that black lives don't matter. And like I said, I'm not here to discuss that. I am here to discuss what's on the books. How could you vote to take something down and remove it when the rest of the residents of Tarboro are supposed to follow these town ordinances? So that's what I'm asking you to look at. Okay, thank you for your time. Good evening. I'm Billy Wooten. I live at 282 McNair Road. Um, I've been a resident of Tarboro for 50 years. I'm a business owner. I consider myself a leader of the community. I, um, I'm a county commissioner, and I'm here tonight to represent myself, and I do not come to represent the Ashcombe County Commissioner body. I do, in my elected role, represent about 7,000 Tarboro citizens. And I've had a deep interest in this issue of the monument on the common ever since it came up, and I've had opportunity to speak with numerous individuals about it. Not one individual of the 70% of the town of Tarboro, which I represent as a county commissioner, has said to me that it needed to be removed entirely. Now, I have been in discussions with people that say we should find a compromise. 
um, and or leave it where it is. But no one has come to me and said that this monument needs to be removed. As a leader of my business and world, uh, as a county commissioner, it's never easy when you have such divergent views. And I don't counsel you, counsel people, to try to find a compromise. I think that when you try to find a solution for something that is so divisive, that the right solution is one where no party is happy. You find a middle ground. If you, if you bow down to one group's demand, and let's say that monument is removed entirely, or you bow down to the group's demand that says, let's leave it up, either way, you will lose. It is my opinion, and I would ask this body here tonight to seriously consider compromise. Uh, I, would, I would ask that you would enter a motion that the Confederate monument, the obelisk, which stands on our common, that you would consider removing the bronze soldier from the top of the pedestal, and that you would add additional historic context around the monument that tells the story of the 21st century's viewpoint of it. But do not, in my opinion, take the monument down and remove it. Do not deface it by erasing or grinding off any of the letters in which our ancestors put on the monument. Now, my family has been here for hundreds of years, 250 years here in Edgecombe County. That monument, it says, is dedicated to Edgecombe County soldiers. Now, in today's political environment, we hear the narrative that, that anyone who gave their life or their service to their town or their county or their state during that war was totally and unabashedly in favor of slavery. At their time and their place, they believed in, in actually fighting that reason, but many other reasons as well. If that was a monument that held the president of the Confederacy there and espoused that slavery was the number one issue and you all you young men should go fight and die, then you know we should do something about that. But that monument represents 1,400 Edgecombe County citizens, citizens of the town of Tarboro, citizens of Edgecombe County. They, they volunteered, they were drafted, they gave the ultimate sacrifice. I think we should continue to honor them. Now, if we need to evolve over time and find a compromise, so be it, I think that's right. But do not eradicate it. Do not destroy the monuments that were put up by our prior generations just because today's political environment says this is what we should do now. I ask for compromise. I really do. The fountain is a Confederate memorial as well. If you so choose to, to follow a principle in your heart of removing the obelisk, why would you not also move, remove the fountain? It's a Confederate memorial. If you think about rededicating that, then you have dishonored the reason it was ever put there in the first place. A 19-year-old Toro resident, a member of his local militia, which was basically the National Guard at times, called up by his town and his state to do his duty. He went to Virginia and gave his life for his town and his county and his state. And then we citizens of Tarboro and Edgecombe County decided to erect a monument in his honor. Are we really going to take that down or rededicate it to something where it was not its purpose? There at the end, let's add context to what we in the 21st century think that that means to us today. But do not put words in the mouths of the people who put it. Is that my time right here? Please consider a motion that would find a compromise, but not the removal. Thank you. My name is Patsy Miller, and I live at 304 East Park Avenue in Tarver. I was born and raised in Scotland, educated in North Carolina, and left my home in California at the age of 22 to pursue my career in teaching Spanish. I married a Marine. Little did I realize that our life and family together would make 17 moves in his 26-year career, living and traveling in four continents before we drove into Tarboro in 1984. 
looking for a final home for retirement and a second career. We operated our bed and breakfast business here for 20 years before closing due to a family emergency and I taught Spanish in Edgecombe County Schools. Now, the purpose of relating this to you is that we learned a great deal about the history of the various countries in which we lived and traveled. And the visual element of history was an invaluable teaching tool. I say visual because we saw the horrors of World War II in Germany at their concentration camps. The German government did not tear down them. They didn't burn the evidence. They left them exactly as they were when General Eisenhower terminated the German extinction of nine million Jews and other ethnic groups. We visited the Anne Frank house in Amsterdam where her Jewish family lived in secret in a small attic for several years. The government did not tear down the house. It stands as it was during World War II. And believe me, you would not be able to view this place, see it visually, without learning that history. It was a history lesson learned from the evil of others who did the unspeakable because they believed it to be right. Our Confederate history in Tarbert is tied to the people's lives in the 1860s. The nation of two geographical locations became split over the economic and social mores of the time, resulting in a war. The result of that war brought a new united nation together, living up to the Declaration of Independence phrase, all men are created equal. That was a good thing. The statuary on our time common is a reminder that it took a war with thousands of lives lost to learn that lesson. We cannot change our history. We cannot pretend that the removal of those reminders will make things different in Tarbra. If we move those statues to another location, their symbolism remains wherever you plant them. The symbolism of the Wyatt Fountain is identical to the statue representing the death of Confederate soldiers. You cannot remove one and keep the other because both are interconnected. I have a question regarding the fountain. Why did the council vote to restore the fountain a year or so ago, spending a large sum of money to do so, if its significance in our history is so repugnant? Are we going to fall like sheep and jump off the proverbial cliff because, quote, it's the political correct thing to do now? Are you aware that in Lexington, Virginia, that decision makers vote not to remove Confederate state statues? And the Virginia Military Institute, known as VMI, will not rename its buildings. Not everyone is choosing to bend to the mantra of federal evil, Confederate evil, excuse me. The significance of both the stature and fame has not changed, nor has the significance of the concentration camps changed in Germany. The very important lesson to learn is that both our stature and fame are very meaningful parts of our national history. If taught correctly, citizens will understand them for what they represent. They do not represent slavery. They are a tribute to men who died doing what they thought was right to do at the time. Removing statues will not erase a racism that you may think exists here. You couldn't, shouldn't remove statues that mark one's participation in that war. You can change names and places, but you cannot change what's in someone's heart. Thank you for the opportunity. Good evening. I'm Brandy Chapel, 1201 St. Andrew Street here in Tarboro. I'm a 20 year veteran teacher. I've taught in Edgecombe County for 19 years and um, had the opportunity to listen to and teach some of our fine, young, bright youth in this town. Um, I am for the removal of this Confederate statue on the town common. I do agree with Mr. Wooten that a compromise may be the best thing. I do live in a historic home here in Marlboro um, that has housed many educators. I live in the Luli and Mary Bridgers home, it was built in 1885, and um, has, like I said, housed many educators and um, I do believe that 
there's no reason to debate taking down structures, um, buildings. That's that's why the Nazi uh, the co concentration camps are still there. I visited Dachau. I have experienced the uh, memorial there, the museum there. I'm not for taking down structures. I don't know why that keeps it mixed in with with statues. Um, I've done a bit of research in order to come to the conclusion that we should remove the statue. Um, I do enjoy the historical background of this town. I love this town. I said 20 years ago, I grew up in Western North Carolina that I would live here in my dead body because I only visited when it was July and August and I thought it was just the hottest place in the world. I've come to love it. You'll have to drag me out of here, um, much to the dismay of some. Um, slavery is mentioned in the first few sentences of most of the declarations of succession of the southern states um, and you'll find it in the first or second perhaps third sentence georgia you find in the second and third sentence the words african slavery in their secession mississippi it's in the second sentence talking about that they are um, part, they are really into the institution of slavery and they called it the greatest material interest of the world. Um, South Carolina, it's their first sentence in their declaration of secession um, from the United States. And um, Texas, it's the third sentence in their declaration of secession. Um, and it talks about protecting the institution, this is, and I quote, protecting the institution known as Negro slavery, the servitude of African to the white race within her limits, a relation that had existed from the first settlement of her wilderness by the white race, and which her people intended should exist in all future time. This is what these people were fighting for. Virginia, it's the first sentence. Um, they also, um, mentions slavery in their first sentence. And many, many will argue, and I've heard this argument, um, that it's about states' rights and it's about the economy. And people are not wrong about that. But it is about the state's rights to hold slaves. And it was about the economy on whose backs this, it was built on the backs of slaves. That is exactly what it was about. So yeah, it was about states' rights and the economy but solely because slavery made it that way. Um, Julian Carr was, uh, was a person that came and dedicated this statue when, he, when um, we had it put up. And here are a couple of quotes from um, what he said when he dedicated the Silent Sam statue, which was also a Confederate memorial in Chapel Hill. I won't read the whole thing to you, but part of it, he um, brags that he, and I quote, horse whipped a Negro wench until her skirts hung in shreds. This is the person that dedicated our statue here in Tarboro. This is the way this person thought. Uh, I've been to two round table conversations with several town council members. I've seen your faces. Um, and I've seen you, um, they were public meetings in the common. Um, these weren't held in secret. Um, as some people think they were. And people from both sides were invited to these meetings. The first meeting I went to, um, anybody who was in opposition chose not to come and, and, and share their voice. Not sure why, but they didn't. Um, the second um, meeting, we did have um, some people that were, were asked for a compromise. Mr. Wooten was there, um, and I do think compromise might be a good, a good thing. Um, because I do think, I think you made a really good point that if you're going for one side or the other, somebody's gonna be upset. I've been called two-faced this week by, by Mr. Leggett in the back several times um, because I think the compromise may be the best thing. Um, and I've always said in marriages, compromise is good. Relationships, compromise is good. Um, I don't think that's two-faced. Um, my suggestion is to move, this to the, move the actual statue to the military museum and have some educational programming around this statue. I work at Martin Millennium Academy and we do take our students to the military museum and it would be an excellent way to teach our children what really happened. Um, we 
that also, oh, sorry, I lost my my place. Um, we need to continue conversations. We need, sorry, we need to call my times. Okay, I just would like to say that I would like to continue conversations in our town after this. This is just a first step. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Eddie Taylor. Okay. Dan Leggett. My plumber. <laughs> uh, my name is Dan Leggett, as most of y'all may know. I, I own a small plumbing business here in town. I do love to talk and I do know how to talk, but when I get into public spaces like this, it, it's kind of a little different. Um, I'm here to just lend a voice for what I call a youth and I grew up here. We drove past that statue as kids growing up, never had a problem with it. We ride out on 64. Our mayor is smiling, standing beside the, the Confederate monument for the um, uh, fountain. It's a part of our history. Um, as uh, Ms. Chapel brought up, we have structures here in our town. She actually lives in a house that was dedicated by the two daughters who dedicated the fountain. Um, she says one thing about the fountains are bad and the statue needs to go, but it expresses how amazing history was built with her house. We had a Confederate colonel build that house with Mr. Bridgers, who obviously lived at the Grove, which we now call the, the Blunt Bridgers house. He had a different mindset and ideas back then. Are those our ideas now? Absolutely not. Um, it, it's the people in our town, as Mr. Wooden said, thousands upon thousands that do not want to remove it. I came here today and I was hell bent that we should not remove it. Listening to the, the, you know, Mr. Wooten, I think a compromise of some sort uh, would be great. I, I feel like they need to be where they're at with the compromise of history lessons being taught with them. Um, but we represent Tarboro as a historic Tarboro. We put the fountain on a lot of our memorabilia of why we should come to quaint historic Tarboro. But where does it stop? Does it stop at the fountain? Does it stop at the Confederate statue? Um, we have houses that are on national history list that are built by Confederate soldiers, Confederate uh, people that we live in, downtown Tarboro. Um, those houses are, are put on this registry to attract people to come and live and visit our town. So are we saying, you know, please come and look at this house, but oh, you can't look at this house because it was built by somebody I do or do not agree with. Um, do we, does anybody in this room agree with slavery? I would say no, not one person, white or black, young or old. We, we don't believe in that. What they did 100 years ago doesn't reflect what we do now. I can get myself in enough trouble with my attitude and my mouth in Tarboro. I don't need the help of my ancestors with people trying to speak for me. I do a pretty good job of that myself. And that's my point is, you know, when we ride downtown, do I look at three or four of these houses and go, oh, yeah, that was built by a Confederate, you know, racist general? No. 90% of the people in Tarbert don't know who built these historic houses downtown. And I'm just looking at you, Mr. Pitt, because I see you every day. I can look over here at Mr. Brown. Uh, we, we, we look at these houses um, that are built. Um, speaking of building houses, Mr. Brown builds houses. Do we look at a house built by Mr. Brown and think of his religious background or freedoms or Mr. Taylor's or, or Mr. Mayo or, or whoever does the work. No. I work for a lot of people in Tarboro, Republicans, Democrats, Independents, APS, all. I've never, we don't have issues. Do we argue on Facebook? Yes, sir. Do we argue or we talk about our issues together? Yes, sir. Has it ever affected one of my jobs? Never. Uh, there's a lady in Tarboro, me and her have never seen eye to eye. We always argue about politics, but when she calls me at the morning with her plumbing's bust, it's not an issue because people can separate this day and age business and personal beliefs. And until we let the, uh, our town citizens speak, you know, I know our duly elected officials do their job, but at some point, you know, is it 150 people who want to take this mon mon uh, monuments and memorials down? Is it, 11,000 in the county and the town that says we want it. Um, like I said, it's um, it's not up to me totally, but I would be up for a compromise of some sort. Um, but I do say this, if you want to tear one down, we can tear them all down. Um, and I mean that, you know, so if you don't want to be reminded of the history here, the Freedom Hill sign, why would you want to be, if you don't want to be reminded as a slave person through this Confederate statue, 
Why do you want to be reminded as a freed slave? Um, it, it's if you want to erase history, you erase it. It's, it's done. So that way you can go ahead and start being a human being and a person, and we can make our town and our county better. Was slavery bad? Yes. Was slavery wrong? Yes, sir. But at the end of the day, I can't change it. You can't change it. Mr. Chapel can't change it. Nobody can change it. But it's nice to read it, see how wrong it was, and learn from it. But if it's nothing to read and nothing to look at and nothing to hear my granddaughter and say, hey, you see this statue? This guy performed evil. This guy was bad. This guy did wrong things. We don't want to be like that. Or you know, does she not know anything about the history and they make their own history? Thank y'all for your Bush Ridgeway, 1009 St. Anne Street. It's kind of interesting. I've, I want to talk about compromise, and everybody else is. And so the reason was, I've been to a lot of meetings in the last 30 days. I've been in those meetings where there's, there's one side that definitely have to take it down, definitely it has to stand. But the last two meetings were interesting in that people really started talking about compromise. What can we do so that every party's happy? Which I think is great because this town is going to go one way or the other. If if this council votes to, to actually take it down, there's going to be one side of this town going to be totally unhappy and one side it is. Other way around, same thing. There has to be a happy medium so that we can all be satisfied and happy with this. And this council has a very tough job. But I think your job is to find a compromise, find out how we can come together, be together to make this an event that we're proud of. Because at the end of the day, this is a movement that eventually will end. It will stop. But what's going to happen is there's going to be a legacy involved. And what's going to be determined here will have long-term implications for this town of Tarboro. The decision will be either we're through, the town will be divided, or it can be united if compromised. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, I'm Mike Sellers. I am a rising 11th grade scholar at the North Carolina School of Science and Math. Uh, I'm a citizen of Princeville, North Carolina, and I've attended uh, schooling here in Tarboro, North Carolina. Um, and I would like to start by saying that the statue must come down. Uh, when we talk about compromise, I think that it is important to look at the history that we have compromised for so long. We have allowed this statue to sit up for so long. That is compromise. That is compromise that Blacks have dealt with for years and years. That's compromise. When talking about this statue, I think it is important to differentiate uh, a statue from a house. A statue that sits up high and looks down on me that was built from Confederacy that raped women of African descent, that beat and bruised men of African descent in a house that is eye level that I can walk in these are different objects and no i'm not saying that the house is any better than the statue i'm saying that the statue must come down compromise is putting the statue in the bedroom that's compromise compromise is educating not embracing history but educating property he's standing as a town statue does not represent us to sit on the line that we so honor, adore, and lift up high. So compromise is moving the statue. And I speak on behalf of multiple students, multiple people from different communities. This statue must come down. And as we look into a future conversations around race, race relations, and so much more within our community must be discussed. The statue is a symbol of a system that is broken, not the system itself. So when removing this statue, we must keep in mind that education and so much more is still to be discussed. Again, I'm Elijah Sellers, and I thank you for hearing my discussion. <laughs> Thank you.
Good evening, I'm Demetrius Hill. I stay on 805 on Wooten Street. Um, really just coming from the heart and off the head. Um, I've said it ever since the time. One of the coordinators that uh, helped with the Simpson Ball. I started coming to the town meetings, you know, being a witness, this day the third. And, uh, you know, we pray to, we pray to God. We pray to God, Jesus Christ. Um, I've heard you say your daughters wanted it removed. Me personally, I could care less about the statue. My thing is systematic racism. Um, but we're in a town, and it hurt my feelings to hear some of you say um, you didn't know that racism was here. Um, but it was in the last week. It, 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 it kind of disturbed me because you represent us. Or you, know, you represent the town. And to hear that, I was like, ah, that didn't sit too well with me. But either way, um, you have two different types of people. We know that. Um, two different races. We know that. We know what the town we're spending in. Um, just do what's right. Um, that's on you all. But just do what's right. Let's do what's right. Hear people's hearts. Let's do what's right. Y'all know what we do with. Um, we know what's going on. Let's do what's right. Let's do what's right. Let's do what's right. That's it. Philip Lampern. Good evening, uh, Mayor, Town Council Members, Town Manager. My name is Philip Lampert, and I reside at 3005 Lansdowne Drive, Tarboro, North Carolina. I grew up in Duplin County, which is not too far from here. My wife and I bought a house in 2015. I've been employed in the Tarboro and Princeville area for a little over a day. I've attended some meetings recently on our town commons to discuss the matter that's before tonight. And the impression I've been given by many who have lived here their entire lives that my opinion should not matter very much because I did not grow up here. I hope that the fact that I'm not born in Tarboro will not impact your views of my comments this evening, as it has others with whom I have spoken recently. It's my opinion that the Confederate statue on the commons should be moved, and here's why. Based on the conversations that I've had with people in the last several years, not the last several weeks, that I believe that Tarboro is a town that is divided among racial lines, along racial lines. I have a couple of specific stories to demonstrate why I feel that way. Uh, there's a gentleman who is in his late 60s, uh, who is uh, a black man who I consider a family. And I listened to him tell stories about how he, when he went to get his first mortgage, uh, he was told that even though he could afford the mortgage, he could not be given the mortgage by the bank because if he ever defaulted, they would never be able to resell the house because a black man had lived there. I realize those stories are true throughout the country, but we're talking about Tarboro right now, and I'm telling you about a citizen of Tarboro who's a friend of mine. I have another uh, gentleman who I call Poss, and is also a black man, um, because he is he's very close to me and he's a father figure. Uh, he's a pastor in our town, also ran an insurance company. And uh, when he started promoting Obamacare, he would walk out to his insurance company's front lawn and find bananas. I find that to be very, very, uh, in, I, I feel that that shows that in many cases, Tarboro does have a racial divide among some factions of the population. The conversations I've been a part of in recent weeks make the racial divide seem all more prominent. The individuals with whom I've spoken, uh, who do not look like me, have expressed to me that they have very strong feelings regarding the statue and the emotions it invokes in them. I've heard the, some who support the idea of the statue remaining state that it is a piece of art, and I would like to encourage the town council to consider that if it is accepted as a piece of art, then the fact that it remains on public property implies that the town co-signs what the statue stands for and not what it stands for to just you individually, but to those who look at it. The statue has the CSA commonly displayed on it. We all know the CSA stands for the Confederate States of America, and the Confederate States of America wanted to enslave black people. Whether you personally believe the statue stands for that or not, many who stand in front of it will know that the Confederate States of America stood for that, and the statue will elicit a response from those who view it as art should. Whatever they feel from it, good or bad, it will be implied the town of Tarboro stands for the feelings that they have. Which is, what is the size of the night? It's the message for our town and surrounding.
you just have to move. You will tell to heal me of meeting your community or have been hurt by it in the past. I realize the topic of money will definitely come up tonight, but what price can you put on helping to heal some of the wounds of slavery and segregation? I've heard this uh, statue be expressed as a teaching tool. I promise you that our students are not learning about the Civil War from that statue. Our students are learning from the Civil War because of the people who stand in front of them and teach it. There are many studies in education that show that the most important factor in whether or not a child is successful in school is the teacher who stands in front of them. Whether or not they know the Civil War will have nothing to do with that statue. I've heard people say in recent weeks that this statue didn't bother people until now, and why does it matter now? But I also would say to the people who want to stand that I did not see you standing around it in recent years either. In the years that I've been here in a little over a decade, I have never seen anybody stand around it and uh, honor it or anything of that nature until we started having these discussions in the last month. And I could have missed them, I'll, I'll say that, but I have not seen them. <clears throat> Again, I've heard the question come up of why are we doing it now? Why are we having this conversation now? And I would say that in the past, those same questions have come up. I would venture to believe that people, when we started the, the country had a uh, civil war, that people thought slavery had lasted for so long. Why was it a problem then? Why should it change then? Same thing with segregation. Segregation had lasted for so long. I'm sure people said, why should it change now? We've done this for years. There's always a time for now. And who knows? If you were not put here for such a time as this, for this decision. I understand that whether the statue moves or not, it won't erase the feelings or racial views in our town. It will send a signal to those who have been hurt by it for years and years. I've heard, um, God, please consider that tonight, make a decision to begin the healing process and not to perpetuate pain. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Kyle Boyd. Good afternoon. Um, I'm here as part of the, the statute also, but I have another issue. Um, mm -hmm. And also, state your name address. Connie Boyd, 206 Hunter Hill Road, Top Bear, North Carolina. Um, my class was the first graduating class of immigration. Uh, when we first got... <laughs> At the, at the beginning, um, which I believe, at the beginning we had a committee in Patillo and a committee at Tarver High. Our job was to, we were chosen, handpicked by, this, by the city, I think, or the town. Anyway, we were handpicked to make a choice and make everything be as one and make everything integrated. So we started with the mascot, with the, with the um, Viking. We had to do, do it with the title. The Trojan. It hurt us. It, it, black and white. It hurt us to get with the tar high and get with the W Patilla high. But somewhere down the line, when we integrated the school, we, we named school Tarboro Senior High, which represented both schools. Arbor High was segregated, W Patilla was segregated. But it was never supposed to go back to Tarboro High ever. So my question, and it bothers me ever since, I mean, I got with it in 1971. And this year bothered me to this day how two of us, two groups of people, black and white, got together and we voted and voted and voted to make things right for the future. Now, for the first couple of years after we graduated, stayed Tom High, Tom Senior High, like it was supposed to, because it involves black and white. Somewhere down the line, when they moved the school from over here to where it is now, Segregated name Tarver High came back up, and I don't think it was fair. And a lot of my white friends, they ain't not here with me now, but everybody we know that was wrong to do that. We were so we were so comfortable with Tarver Senior High because it included both schools. And I was wondering, is it, it, it could be named anything except Tarver High or Doug Gabe Patilla High? We did, we, it hurt us when we did it, but we, we had to make a choice and we went with it. So my thing now is, I don't have to be like that. It's not fair. And that is my reason for standing here tonight. I, it, 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 hurt, it hurt me for years. And I wish it was something that we could do about it to include 
black and white. So that's what the beginning of it was. I don't know who changed it, but it was never supposed to be tar behind ever again. We got rid of the Trojan. The type was still around, but some things just can't just can't do nothing about. It. But I'm just glad I had this opportunity. I feel so much better right now speaking about because I've been holding it in for years. It wasn't supposed to never be far behind again. And I hope we can do something about that. Thank you. Bryce Knight. Good evening, Council Assembly. My name is Bryce Knight. I live at 1112 Edmondson Avenue, East Harborough. I interject East only because, in my opinion, rightly or wrong, much of the decision making related to important policy and procedure in our town, in many instances, seem to consider and be made with that division in mind. I think this assembly, the representation here, is emblematic of that, and uh, I take umbrage to it. The message on the marquee of the old colonial theater next door said, save our statue and monument. Well, the operative word in context, both statements, our town and our state, our statue, is our, but not our separately but our inclusive. Now the following statement is a redress comments from opposing viewpoints along with facts regarding the argument issue at hand. The entirety of it is without ill intent, just take or disregard for any citizen sentiment, opinion, or anything having to do with anything that's in mind or heart. As I said in the initial debate, the Confederate statue has also fallen on the imaginary divide of the street, and it seems that the revolution becomes also destined to be on the surface of this. Here to pay with one side of the street or the other, quite frequently. That begs the question in 2020, mind you, why is that man even still part? Of the process. These turbulent and troubled times are fair and simple solutions seem so apparent and so available. Simply unite instead of divide. Why can't it just be about righteousness? An objective look at right versus wrong in this matter must be the rule. I've heard and respect arguments that the statue accentuates the historical value of old Tarboro. There's the one that says the nostalgia of family heritage and the way of life as and present is captured by it. How about where is the money going to come from to take it down? And of course, there's even the one that says, I didn't know it was a Confederate symbol at all. I simply thought it was just a nice statue in the park. Any of that or all of that is your reasoning to keep the statue in place, then I say you're being a bit short sighted. You should take a more factual look at the historical value of it. First of all, the statue was erected nearly half a century after the Emancipation Proclamation. Its construction was more about the region's refusal to accept the loss of the Civil War than it was to honor those killed in it. No record of the honorary 21 gun salute or playing of the military ceremonial tune taps in honor of the fallen. And I too did some research on that event. The event does not tell about the band playing Dixie, the anthem of the Confederate South at that event. Tarburian women belonging to a group called the Daughters of the Confederacy, paid for and sponsored dedication and celebration event. Somehow back then, they found money to put it up. 
During that time frame, similar statues, monuments, hung up all over the South, more or less as Jim Crow to old as a subtle but direct form of intimidation as blacks became more assertive and in inserting ourselves into the fabric and promise of America. Other remnants of the mindset are that it remains a tangible reminder of the history of enslavement and degradation of human beings representative of outright treason against the United States of America. It oversaw and validated Jim Crow brutality, not the least of which is present tense lynching. The thought process behind it enabled the relegation of an entire race to subclass citizenship without the right to vote. It literally stood watch over decades of separate but unequal segregation. It's not you need to sum it up. I will. It was recently, it looks down with approving minutes of redlining, gerrymandering, economic disparity, and various other forms of suppression. What I say to you, Council, is that you are elected to make these decisions on this type of civic discord. I say to you that this nonsensical argument just further makes for animosity, dissension, and division in this town and for generations yet to come. And I mean, that may be your children, your grandchildren, who have this argument with mine. It's time to put right over wrong. I can say it's simple. This decision is available. Just do the right thing, as it was said. It's time to put an end to that impractical Panola Street divide. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Marisa Hillary. Loretta, excuse me. Hello, Frank. My name is Loretta Hilliard. Um, I live on Main Street. Um, I've been in Tarver my entire life. I don't have anything written down because I've been out of town. I just got back in, but I wanted to be here tonight. Um, I am all for removing the statue. Um, I heard so many questions tonight. Some of those questions was why now? Um, I heard the movement is going to end. I heard so many things that's just not right. The problem is, as a black person, that statue represents so many ill feelings towards us. Um, it's hard to say let's compromise and let's be considerate, let's divide and let's this. When you're not the one who's being offended, it is us. Uh, I don't think no one else should be able to say how we feel. Um, and it's not that it just started. It's just that this generation has gotten a little bolder. And we're able to speak our words that our ancestors have been afraid to do. Um, I went to a town meeting on the commons, and one lady, she said, well, I've seen it, and I knew what it meant, but I chose to ignore it. And every time I come here, I just don't look at it. Well, I've always been that one to like to face everything head on. Um, I like to look it in the eyes. It's 2020. We should all be able to see with a clear vision this year. We should be able to call black, black, white, white, right, right, and wrong is wrong. We don't need to decide what's right or who, or who's right. It's about what's right. Do we have any compassion? Can we love our brothers and our sisters? Can y'all even begin to feel our pain? Y'all have white people and other races have a have a, a generation of wealth. I mean, wealth is not in money. It's in so many things that we were robbed of. My mom couldn't even tell me she loved me for years. It took me to turn 20 to get out of say, hey, oh, like, I love you. And she's like, I love you too. And I said that every day, 24, because I do, I love everybody. I mean, it's hard for me to meet a stranger or somebody. And I say, if I do, it might be a little biased because it's me. If I can't get along with me, it's, it's not me. But it took me five or 10 years to be a person say, I love you too. They just couldn't say it. They show love by giving us things that we need. And so the problem is it's now because we have learned to find our inner strength. And
And what they were afraid of because they've seen so much, or they wasn't taught from that generation to that generation, we've learned how to find it. We've learned education. We've done our own, like for myself. I love now. So it's not a whole lot you can get up on me, and I pretend to be a little slow sometimes, but I won't know. And I want to know because without knowledge, I don't have any power. And so all I'm saying is I don't really have a whole lot to say other than if we elect you all to sit in these positions, let's hear and feel our pain because no one can tell you how we feel if it's not true. I've been dealing with so much this year that I said, you know what, what I'm so sick of is people want to validate how I should feel. No one can tell me how I should feel. If you want to know how I feel, ask me. And then when I tell you how I feel, don't say, oh, you shouldn't feel that way because... Or because, yes, okay, it can be a learning thing for the, for the generations to come, but it's not going to stop. Let me go and make this clear. This movement is not going anywhere. Um, and I am with D.C. I'm Demetrius here. I am also one of the coordinators for the sympathy call. And I want you to, I love everybody. Like, I, I can get along with everybody. So when does it stop? When is the time? Will it be 15 years from now, 20 the time is now. That's why it's here now and it's not going anywhere. I got my little boys. I got three. I have six kids. I love them all. They all spoil it. One of them really gets in my nerve. In the oldest. But nevertheless, my two younger boys, they are nine and eleven. And now they're because it's such a big mess. So those that wasn't aware, they are tapping into it. And then they're digging and they're learning more. And then they're being irritated by it because it is a big thing. And everybody knows it's, it's here now. And so the time is now to remove, put it in the, in the museum. Let those that want to come and look at it and be educated on it have that choice. But because it sits, as they say, in the prize of Tarver, which is our time coming, which I have learned belongs to everyone in Tarver, let everyone feel good and feel safe and not in, because it's hard to intimidate me. So I can look at that money and I could care less about it. And that's how I feel. I'm not intimidated by it. Paid in no mind. But if my brother and my sisters are hurting, should I not feel the pain? Because at first I said, I'm not sticking on no money. I could care less about it. Then I start hearing all these stories. I had one lady say to me, but you know, if I'm sad, I could get sick. And if I'm sick, I could gain my weight. If my hair too short or too long, I can. But I can't change my color. Well, my grand, my great grandmother is full blood. She's a white. My grandfather's is a Cherokee Indian. I'm everybody. So I'm and I got short hair and I ain't changing, not for anyone. So we just got to know how to hear someone else's pain. So I stand with removing the money. Thank you. Alicia Ruffin. Alicia Ruffin. I'm Melissa Ruffing. I'm at 110 East Park Avenue. Um, the statue should come down. At why should we have to compromise on what is right? Um, Black Americans have been compromising on civil rights issues since the beginning of America. It makes no sense to compromise on what's right just to appease racists. If you look at who's wanting them to stay and who wants them taken down, it's obvious who's been oppressed by them. You should listen to your black friends and citizens when they tell you it hurts them. How are we supposed to move on and move forward as a town if we keep these hateful monuments up? You don't want to be the last town to take them down. And don't compromise the basic human decency of removing them. And these are the beginning steps of writing a centuries old wrong. Thank you. Thank you. Big pigs. Get off your phone, Greg. I'm trying to get my phone off, y'all. <laughs>
My name is Greg Hayes. I live at 1105 Grand Avenue. I can't speak about the appointment. I wrote some things down. I attended three meetings concerning this um, statue situation. The last, the first meeting I attended was here. And what got to me when I was, the only thing I would hear um, people say was the blacks, the outsiders coming to destroy part of our history. At no time did any African Americans stand up to the point Napoleon say anything like the white or anything like that. The second meeting I attended to <coughs> was um, what's the lady's name? She did the history thing. And she would tell us about the Buffalo. They had the black Buffalo soldiers and told me to do the check. So I went to check them too, where the Buffalo soldiers came from. And it showed where they came from. The Caucasian Store the Buffalo soldiers because they were afraid to fight the the Indians alone. So that's how they came along. And the third meeting I went to, we were talking about some education people with different they used to be with the school system was saying that we need to teach the kids about the statues and everything, the history of the statues. Do we really want to put that in the school system and tell the truth? to what happened about the statue, how the statue came along to be there and everything, I don't think so. And my thing, my situation about the statue and Mr. Teller, yeah, okay. I know last me said that we need to talk to some of our family members and see what they think of how they feel about the statue. I feel like you said, I talked with my uncles and he, my grandfather and my family were the first ones to move on Baker, Baker Street Extension in 1924. The first black family moved there. My uncle that I talked to moved, they moved there in 1924. His first time ever coming to the town of Tarboro was 1942. He said they were afraid because they kept telling them about coming from the Columbus. Walking across the commons. He didn't know come to inside the city limit to 1942. So I checked the, checked the history. And I was 20 years old when my grandfather died. He died he was 98 years old. He was born in 1800. So my thing with the statue situation, we keep hearing history, history. Do we want to teach the kids about the history? Look at now, most of y'all are over 50, except for they take about 20 something, but everybody else over 50 years old. So, we, you for the one, okay? But the statue situation need to go. We bring up young people now. These young people don't want to hear what about the statue. You know what I'm saying? If y'all tell the truth about the statue, It'd be a lot of people upset. I don't think we're gonna go in the school system and teach the kids the truth about the about the statue. And they somebody was saying that the schools, I was on Facebook the other day talking about school being the kids out there field day. I never did. I talked to all my grandkids. I talked to some of the kids in the community. I talked to some of the kids over there in the neighborhood. One of them said they ever went to the commons and been talked about the statue. So I don't know what they think about that the schools just take the kids on the on the common to teach about the statues. I know there's gonna be a difficult decision to make on y'all hand. There's gonna be a lot of people upset. Either way y'all make the decision to decide where to go. The African American will be upset, the Caucasian will be upset, but I think y'all didn't make the decision for the young people. Think about the young folk as they grow up, learning about what's going on now. Let's go back, let's not go back to then. Let's start now and teach our kids how we get along as a community and everything. Not what that statue did to us back in the day. Thank you. Thank you. Steve Redditch.
My name is Steve Rich. I live at 900 St. Andrew Street. <clears throat> I personally live in the house that my wife was born and raised in. And also I'm renovating a house that was built in 1771. So from my perspective, history is important, good or bad. So we must learn from it. And tonight, I can honestly say that I do not know what it's like to be an African-American in today's time. Quite simply, no. Similarly, none of us here tonight in this room who are listening know what it's like to have been black or white in the 1860s or the early 1900s. Personally, I am not in favor of removing history of any kind, like I said earlier, good or bad. History is for learning. Kids go to school, they learn three R's. But as parents, we also teach them life's lessons. And that is part of the history that we have here. So we have to teach life lessons and reconcile that with history. As we look forward towards the future, we always need to keep an eye on the past. My question is this. How do we want to be viewed 100 years from now? We need to reconcile the past with the future. Let's reach a compromise that educates future generations and does not erase history as it is here today. Thank you. Thank you. I believe that's it. Right. Um, <clears throat> we'll now move on uh, to town manager's recommendations. Um, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first, I'd ask him. Move and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion is approved. Okay, the first action item on the agenda is Amendment 20 42, which is the Confederate mind discussion. Uh, this discussion matter was tabled in the last meeting. Please turn your mic on. It was brought, I think we have discussed this and through our attorney and learned that the council does have the right to remove um, the monument. We do have a legal right to do so as it is owned by the town of Charper and the town council can make such a decision. The town attorney can speak more than this, but based on all the information we could find, it's solely the property of the town of this. And again, we do, have, we do have the right to make a decision as to to stay or to, to move. That's right. Thank you. Anyone? Yes, sir. Uh, I would like to say I spent a lot of time going door to door throughout my work, talking to as many people. The, the discussion of the federal government. Yes, sir. Act times. Go ahead. Um, and um, the mayor asked me to postpone my motion from the last meeting. I would like the opportunity to go ahead and make my motion. Maybe we can have our discussion. Okay, if I may do that at this point. Um, I make a motion to carefully and respectfully remove the Confederate statue from the Tarboro Town Common at the cost determined by the town manager to be put in storage into a suitable private location until a suitable private location at no further cost to the town has been determined, preferably where it still can be honored by those who wish to do so. That's my motion. Motion. Do I hear a second? 
Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Further discussion? Uh, yes. Since I made a motion, I, 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 by, by uh, Robert's new order, one of the most among the first to speak. So I like to go ahead and speak and, uh, and address some things. One of the things, uh, the reason why <clears throat> this uh, idea that um, it's educational and that kind of thing is that the wrong education has been taught. And as long as that statute is there, there's going to be a lot of myths and false information that is being spread about it. Uh, I would like to read a few things. One of them is, um, is uh, John Sweat Rock. He was born, he lived between 1825 and 1866. He was the first African American granted admittance to argue cases in front of the United States Supreme Court. Uh, I'll just give a little more background. He started out being a dentist, and then because of illness, he decided to go on to be a medical doctor. Then after that, he went on to uh, become uh, an attorney. Uh, and I'll read an excerpt from a speech that he gave to the Massachusetts Anti-Slavery Society on January 23rd, 1862, in which he stated the following. Now, it seems to me that a blind man can see that the present war is an effort to naturalize perpetuate and thin slavery in this country. In short, slavery is the cause of the war. I might say, is the war itself. Had it not been for slavery, we should have had no war. Through 240 years of indescribable torture, slavery was wrong out of the bones, the blood, and muscles of Negro, hundreds of millions of dollars, and helped much to make this nation rich. This was during the time of slavery. So this, so this myth was already trying to be perpetuated. Uh, this is from uh, whatever, I for, whatever else I forget, said ex-slave and abolitionist Frederick, Frederick Douglass, said in 1894, I shall never forget the difference between those who fought for liberty and those who fought for slavery. Also, uh, the Southern Poverty Law Center did some research. And these monuments also symbolize the reestablishment of white supremacy following the Civil War. They, they, they rightly point out that the vast majority of statues, streets, and schools dedicated to the memory of the Confederacy date from the period of 1890 to 1930. What decades legal culture and political edifice of Jim Crow was under heavy construction? Another memorial fact was following the 1954, uh, 1954 in which the Supreme Court decided Brown versus the Board of Education. And co coincidentally, the 100th anniversary of the war outbreak. The statues were blunt instruments in institutionalizing white supremacy and blotted out the dual sins of treason and slavery. These statues reinforced the romance of union. And I go on, uh, slavery was the issue, and uh, so one already said, Yes, it was about states' rights, states' rights to uh, play people, and also about finance because uh, slavery was a financial system. Um, I, I, I think what we to hear is not, we're, we're kind of missing something here. Nobody is saying that a certain group can't honor their history. But what we're saying, at the center of the common, that now belongs to all of us. At one point, yes, it was white supremacy and it wasn't great as, as a, 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 a great intimidating cross white line. I wonder what we call it white line with Panola Street. And, uh, and what I'm saying is, but it doesn't belong now in common. That's what we're trying to say. Honor your history wherever you want to, and you got enough resources and money to put up, to put in, in, that started somewhere what not defend anybody when you have an uh, opportunity on. So what, what, what I think is so unfortunate, and I think is people don't understand, that every time we've had to ask for, allow us to be considered our lives, be considered our civil rights, our recognition of civil yeah, there's always going to be some resentment. There's always going to be some type of uh, understanding of our sense of entitlement. And that's kind of what we're saying. This statue belongs because it's entitled for us to honor it in the common. 
But I'm saying to you, that look, look, I, I agree with the young man. I think he pointed out very good. Um, young gentleman said the compromise was 116 years of that statue. And now it's time to move it. And now it's time to put it somewhere where you can honor it. But at the same time, respect others. And I know it's not taught all the time. And I know it's not being taught. But that's what the lesson is, is for our future. Once we move past this, just like integration, and there was a lot of resistance there, just like uh, in the slave, a lot of resistance there, just like uh, the vote the right, we still resist our right to vote. So I'm saying, rather than see it as deprivation, see it as something given to the town. This is a sign for our to give. We don't have a real relationship with the races. It shouldn't be with everything that we get, every type of recognition, every type of understanding of our situation and feelings. We have to fight for This is the opportunity to give. So, okay, we'll back off this. We can move somewhere where we can still honor it. So I still don't, I don't think you have a right to still have that statue there and it offends so many people. I'm saying some things are not a right or wrong. And I think it's just wrong. So that's why I made the motion. Okay, um, we get to from Brown. Can we get back to you? You know, I spent a lot of time thinking about this and I uh, spent a lot of time walking the roads, talking to people, person to person, which is the way I like to do it. Uh, I like to hear people's opinions. I like to go into details and hear everything they have to say um, and, and uh, give people value to what they have to say. Um, I've learned a lot. I always do. I encourage the last one to uh, go out and talk to your older people. They have a lot to tell you. Um, you know, I spoke to a lot of young people. Um, I see a lot of growth from where we used to be to where we are now. But we are not where we used to be. We have made things. Now, have we made all the games? No. Are there still things to do? Yes, they are. But we have made progress, and I have seen it from listening to people. Um, you know, I was a little surprised when I went out and I did pretty much target the African Americans that lived in my area more so than I did, you know, the white people, because I really wanted to know how they felt. Um, some gave me very long answers, and some gave me very short ones. But the long ones uh, were, were really good to hear. Um, but during my time, I found that, uh, you know, there's a, a lot of also still a lot of African Americans who would choose just to leave that. Uh, there are some who would love to take it down. Um, and they gave different reasons for different you know, why to just to leave it there. Some gave you know, differences for why to take it down. So, uh, you know, my decision is going to be based on what I've heard and what I've learned. And, um, you know, I also talked with a lot of whites and, um, you know, some of them mentioned about removing it and some have mentioned about uh, leaving it up. Now, I didn't get to talk to everybody. Some people were at home. But I did get out and, and, and talk to people. So, you know, that's all I'm going to say. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Taylor. In Mr. Woodard's motion, should the council vote to move the monument? Uh, the question on the cost, if there is a cost, and there would be, we will follow a normal procedure in setting bids for that. Uh, based on the estimate that uh, we received, it falls within an informal quote range. Um, so we, we would get quotes okay. for it, but not necessarily a formal bid process would have to be followed. And we would also uh, clarify the fact that we would, at a later meeting, determine if the monument was going to be moved, who would be recipient or new owners of the monument, and they determine where they would want to put it. That would be a decision of the council. 
as it moved toward the monument. That's right. As with any property that the town owns, there are procedures that have to be followed for disposable or selling of that property. So we would have to follow those. Thank you. That's what I wanted to clarify. Okay, um, Councilman Jenkins. Yes, sir, I'd like to. Oh, uh, a substitute motion because I feel that we've heard very good valid arguments from both sides. I think one of the things that we need to understand and probably form a commission and I'd recommend the commission be chaired by the attorney and that four people be picked, preferably not council members, but four other people uh, to decide what to do with the statute. Well, to take it down to, uh, as Mr. Wooden said, uh, reach a compromise and put something in the place of but not remove the office itself and what to do with the wide fountain. We are all faced with a bad situation here and where all the United States is faced, it is faced with a bad situation with COVID-19. Uh, right now, when we have things in Tarbar that are not open, because of COVID-19. And my question is, where is the town going to come with the money to pay for whatever it costs to remove it? Uh, further, I think that we have reached an accord tonight, at least from what I've heard from the people uh, that have spoke, that it's about 50-50 or maybe 60-40, but just depends on which side of the you I think that Billy Wooden remarks and Marianne Compatis remarks said that we need to compromise what is the best thing to do. Uh, and so my motion is number one, the formal commission that is chaired by the attorney and the tech manager. <laughs> Okay, uh, we have a substitute motion. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. I believe that's correct, though. Second, you can do it's a substitute motion. I'm no expert either. Well, we have to vote on that, whether it's admissible or not. And that's what we do.
General classification motions, you can have a main or principal motion, then you can have a subsidiary motion or an incidental motion, you have a privilege motion or other unclassified motions. This will be a subsidiary motion to the main motion of Mr. Williams. Okay. It's called a subsidiary motion. So we have a motion on the floor. Um, this motion, do I hear it? Would you restate your motion, John? Um, obviously, this council is at odds. <laughs> No, sir, I made a second to your motion. I made a second to your motion amendment. And I'm allowed to do that under Robert's rules and orders. No, I'm allowed to make an amendment to your motion. A second motion, right? We will vote on that and then vote on yours. So, motion, the seek motion has been made. Do I hear a second? I'll second. I don't know why. He's got to say it again. Well, I understand that. Take that motion again, John. State it. The motion has been made. The motion has been second. This is second. Now, all those in favor of the substitute motion. Okay. John, can you repeat the motion? The first motion uh, that I made was that we, excuse my language, but it just was struck. I have hard time sometimes. That we, excuse me, I have the floor, I think. The, thank you. No crosstalk. Oh, well, I'm going to hear it down here. Okay. Uh, Mr. May, do I have floor? Yes, you do. Thank you, sir. That we postpone the argument over this statute until a commission is formed with the town attorney chairing commission and town manager pick, pick four more people to be on the commission, not those of the council because of so divided interest in the council. That we come back at the next meeting. And here, have all it take, but it takes one month, one minute for two meetings. And here, the other, uh, the <laughs> proper. Also, that we, uh, I think I said that. Uh, That there are two Civil War memorials on the common, and that has been discussed openly in the public. That both of them come off. If one comes off, we just don't take one down. That they both come. Wait one minute. Are you adding to your motion? It's the same motion. The, okay. We appoint a commission to study. To study, right? Correct. All right. Uh, I think that if I understand in the length of terms that I've been up here, that those memorials, when they were placed down, they had to request by people who put them there that this is what happens to them. That's why I want a committee to study what is supposed to happen with the big uh, monuments, whether they get to somebody else or we can trash them or muddle them down or, or what we can do with them. And number two, the uh, Part of second part of that motion is do both of them go because they're both Civil War monuments. That's my motion. Do I hear a second? Second. The motion has been moved and seconded. Mm -hmm. I, I 
Yeah. Yeah. He's got a substitute motion to your motion. That's what we're voting on there. Substitute motion. It's been moved and seconded. All of those. All right. Uh, a lot of people don't understand. Uh, when we first talked about this at last meeting, there were two things that, that, uh, that were suggested and recommended. Uh, and one was that we refer to the historic society, the historic society. And the second was that we uh, get our attorney uh, to look into it. Uh, a lot of people might not know what, what and this is why I have a problem with it, is uh, if I put it in the hands of the attorney, when you use uh, legal authority and institutional control to maintain a bias or prejudice, preservation prejudice, that's what we call systemic racism. And that's what people understand. We, we, we might have prejudice, and we might have certain uh, discrimination, all of us, have, but when it's backed by, it's backed by our legal authority and institutional control, that's systemic racism. And that's why I had a problem. You know, I let it play out, and they know that the historic society decided this was our decision. And there was nothing, of course, that's legally that can be done to, um, uh, to stop us from making this decision. But to put it in the hands of an attorney to give it some type of legal authority is, is, is uh, I think, is a mistake. So that's that's why I will be against motion like this. I think we, I think the council has the right to make this decision, and it's our responsibility to make this decision, rather than uh, put it on somebody else. Is there any discussion? May I speak? Absolutely. Excuse me. I think that this is a very divisive issue, and I personally do not see why we should have a Confederate monument. However, the Civil War was fought here in Florida. There was a POW camp, and there was also an auxiliary hospital here on the town common. There were 1,400 folks that served for the Confederacy, and there were also 50 folks that escaped slavery, went up north. They were not Buffalo soldiers, they were U.S. colored troops that served in the Union. I agree that we should not have Confederate symbology on the Congress. <clears throat> However, I think it is significant that the Civil War was fought here. And if it means that we take the soldier from the top down, I'm all for it. But I think that we should commemorate the entire war everybody that fought because it was fought here none of the other monuments were fought here none of them have had more impact than that war i think that uh, i believe abraham lincoln said that he would have preserved the union without a single slave he would have preserved the union by freeing everybody and he would have preserved the union by freeing some and leaving them enslaved Therefore, I think that it was good that that war was fought because it ended that. And I think that we need to commemorate the fact that it was here. I believe that that is the opinion of the people of the war that I represent, not entirely, but a lot, a large majority. And that's why I think that it would be good to have a commission set up to figure out what we can put on that, the who, what, when, where, why, and how it got put there, the who, what, when, where, why, and how he came to this decision. That way, for future generations, we can say that we came to this impasse and this is what we decided. I think it is important that this is documented. And that is why I support Councilman Jenkins' mission. Is there any further discussion? The motion has been moved and seconded. They will uh, wait for Mr. Gordon to return, please. No, oh, that's correct. Uh, 
the motion has been made and seconded. The discussion has been made. Uh, do you have any discussion? Further discussion? Just to say that um, I think that we were elected to make decisions for this town and to keep prolonging this issue is not necessary. And we need to go, go ahead and make a vote. It is going to be what it is. And just want to get over it. Keep prolonging. Keep coming back and forth. Back and forth. We already know there's an African American, no, nobody that's in here is not African American. Can speak for me, how I feel, and what I should or should not feel. And I don't tell, say it once before that my great great grandma grew up on a plantation. She did not teach me hate. She taught me to respect everybody, and she taught me to carry myself as a respectable person. I had big foundation in the Christian values, you know, and so either you believe the 66 books. Or you're gonna leave these books. There's no in between. God is not like lukewarm people. So a lot of you go to church every Sunday, Bible study during the week, and pray to the same Jesus than God. I think you ought to be. I don't know if it's the same one I pray but He's not for what's going on right now. And that is what well, some people say. Our yes, it is our. It is you all white people's um, church. It's not ours. None of you all can tell me how I feel. Now, when I didn't know better, I didn't know. But now I know better. I know the history and what it stands for. And like I was saying, again, there's nothing in this town. I asked Miss Flemings, the historian for the town of Tarver, and if my good buddy Rudolph Knight was living, I would have asked him, is there anything that exists in the town of Tarver remind any white people, Latinos, Asian, whoever, of any sort of past? There's nothing, no monument, there's no um, plaque, there's nothing written anywhere that reminds you all, since it's only white people in here, I don't know if somebody else, else of any sort of past. And you cannot sit here tonight and tell me how I should feel. And I do have young grandchildren. I had three boys all weekend, and I educated them the whole time I had them about different things. And um, I don't want to have to tell them when we come down, walk to the pounds and say, gee, mommy, who's that man up there and why is he there? And, and they ask me some more questions, some more questions. I don't even want it to be a part of the discussion. So you all want to celebrate your heritage and God bless you. You celebrate your heritage. Do any of y'all, would it change any hatred that you all have in your heart tonight? No, it won't. And I don't care about that because I, I respect people that respect me. But as a person, as a black woman and a black descendant of an ex-slave and so forth, I do not think it should be on public display. Do I want it destroyed? No. Do I want it removed? Yes. It can be celebrated wherever y'all want to. Any rebel flag flying people, wherever, whatever y'all want to do, that's your, call. That's your business. I don't care because I'm going to live my life. I'm going to live according to how I was taught with 66 books. So, no, I don't think we should keep going on and on and getting committed and this and that. Are you putting Chad on the spot? That's not his business. That's our business. It's no legal issue here. It's a moral issue here. It's not even about black or white, but no, there's nothing in the town of Tarboro. If, if, if it is, please stand up tell the truth. If there's something here that reminds any of you all of something uh, really bad that, um, you know, about your history, no. I asked Ms. Fleming, she's supposed to be the expert. She said no. So therefore, I would want you all to feel righteous as I feel now and be able to sleep with yourself tonight. It ain't about you. It ain't about none of us here. It's about what's right. And if you can sleep with yourself tonight and talk to the same Jesus I talked to, then uh, you stand, sit out there and have your same feelings. You can't tell me how I should feel what should hurt me. You can't, you can't do it. None of my co council members can do the same. And I don't want Chad put on the spot. Okay? So I think we need to go ahead and put this to a vote and let's get it over. Either you win, win it or you're not. Either way, you got to live with your decision. Okay. Um, the, the motion 
the, the second sub subsidiary motion uh, to form a committee uh, and include both, is this right, John? Uh, mind, the monument and the family. All right, moved and seconded. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Aye. Yeah. Right. Have, have to do a hand raise, please. We just, just we gotta raise hands. John, John's motion, yes, it's yours. Yours is coming up next. John's motion is to form a committee uh, and include both the fountain and the monument in that uh, committee. Um, is that correct? <laughs> Well, the way that I understand your substitute motion was that we would form a committee uh, for people. And they would come back to us, led by chair, which is the fifth. Uh, and that they would come back to us with a recommendation. Is that correct? What you're trying to do? Okay. And he wants to include both items. That's correct. So, all those in favor of that motion signify by raising the right hand. Now, please. Got it. All, right. All those against that motion signify by raising your right hand. Okay, the motion has been defeated. Now, back to your motion. Well, I think you might need to. Uh, briefly. <laughs> Um, and my motion was I made uh, I make a motion to carefully and respectfully remove the Confederate statue from the town common at, at the cost determined by the town manager to put it in storage until a suitable private location is determined uh, at no uh, further cost to the town. Preferably, where others who could uh, um, continue to honor it if they choose to do so. Yes. Okay. That motion did get a second. Yeah. That's correct. It did get a second. Yes. Okay. Is there any other discussion? Yes, sir. Make one comment. Um, not sure how this vote is going to go right yet, but uh, keep in mind that uh, this is not an easy decision. This has been a very tough and trying decision. So please respect whichever way it may go um, and honor each one and everyone and just, uh, you know, we'll get through it one way or one another. That's it. Thank you. Well said. Okay. Um, so, in respect to his motion, all those in favor of his motion, signify by raising your right hand. Uh, all right. All those against that motion, signify by raising your right hand. Five to three um, against that motion. I don't know, I've lost track <laughs> in favor of the motion. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's not, that's not funny. <laughs> okay, so the motion is made and carried. Is that correct? 
That's correct. Uh, all right. Um, All right, go ahead. Steve, go ahead. Uh, should we form a committee, oversight committee, as far as what to and who the staff is to go to and when to take it down and to look into the options of who may be able to receive it and take it? We're going to make charge that to the town manager. All right, uh, well, uh, now, the reason I'm saying that is, okay, but, okay, let me, let me give you, uh, say something to you, is, it's easier for someone to take the statue when it's coming down so they can put it on a flatbed semi-truck and be able to take it wherever it needs to go, and it is for the town to take it down and put it in storage and have to get another crane to come and take it off of one truck, put it on another truck, you know, so if, if it can be arranged for that time when it's taken down, then whoever's going to receive it, then they'll have that flatbed truck there, the train can take it down, put it right on their flatbed, and they can haul it wherever they need to go. That, that's why I was saying that. Mm -hmm. um, that way it doesn't have to be moved twice or we don't have to store it or anything else. Once it comes down, it's open. Well, we don't have to. Okay, there's something I can talk about. Mm -hmm. Well, I can look at a new motion. Uh, well, I'm just trying to save some time and, and uh, we don't have the right to speak, Mr. Leggett. We've your time. Well, the reason I'm saying it is an organization that I know that was, may receive it would be able to get a semi truck and a flatbed. They would be able to put it on there and they'd be able to take it off. And That's why. Okay. Uh, That's why. Uh, <laughs> okay. The motion passed five to three. Um. <laughs> All right, next item on the agenda, agenda 20 40 It's a contract for rehabilitation. Uh, it's in relation to our essential single family rehab uh, program. The town of Tarver conducted a bid opening for the rehabilitation, five dwelling units on the first uh, for the ESFRLP 19 project. Two bid packages were received, and the member of the bid tabulation sheet are attached. Based on the bid responses, it's recommended the council vote to award contracts to Evans Custom Builders and Strickland Construction as indicated in the attached memo and that those contracts be executed by the town manager. Ben seconded. Further discussion? Yes, I love that. Where exactly are these units located? Where are they? 815 Bradley Street, 148 Forward Drive, 3057 South Mountain. Did you, did you okay. get that? I, I, I looked at it in my, when I was looking at it. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Motion in second. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion is carried. Other reports? I don't have any other reports. Uh, town attorney? The report. Thank you. Council members, um, EO Taylor signed up first. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Tonight's been, uh, been an interesting night. I'm sure uh, Facebook is already burning. But it's pretty unique in my opinion that, and someone mentioned it, this is the year 2020. 2020 has an analogy in the world of eye care uh, and good vision. I think we showed good vision tonight because
because I think history will truly show that we made the right decision. We did the right thing at the right time. Now, I'd like to think in 1903, when that monument was put up, and I don't, I don't, I don't want to plagiarize something that I heard on Sunday morning, Dr. Haley from Hayes Barton Church talked about non-intentional racism. I'd like to think that in 1903, when the Daughters of the Confederacy established or put that monument up, that they weren't demonstrating racism. I'd like to think that they, they weren't thinking about, well, it's, it's evident to me that they, they weren't thinking about the impact that the monument will have on others. But in 1903, the war had been over about 60 years thereabout. But yet, I'm not black, but I don't think in history that I do, black people's lives had improved an awful lot. They still had to go to the back door of a restaurant to get food. They couldn't sleep in the same hotels that whites did. So there was racism that still went on. But again, I'd like to think that when those folks put that monument up, and it was non-intentional racism. But I have said this in here a number of times. I've taught a lot of management classes, particularly around sexual harassment or bad workplace behaviors. And I talk about intent versus impact. So it really doesn't matter what the intent was when they put it up. What matters is the impact that it had on total society and all of the citizens. I just, uh, I just think again, we, we, we did the right thing. We didn't say tear it down. We did say, let's move it to a more appropriate place. Let's find that place. We'll find the money somehow to do, again, the right thing. This represents to me probably my thoughts and how I've changed over time. Because when we were told we had to wear a mask, I scoffed at that. I, I really did. But over the last couple of weeks when I actually was exposed to a degree to the COVID-19 and my children said, Dad, you got to wear your mask and you got to not work for a while till this thing comes down a little bit. I've started wearing my mask and by doing that, having my face covered up, believe it or not, I've come to see things a little more clearer. I have a look at myself. And there's been times that I, I would have told you two years ago or three years ago when all the things were going on about Silent Sam. I was right there with people that was upset about that and how, how it happened. I still don't believe in mob decisions. I believe in doing things the way we did tonight. But I'll just say, I think what we did was a, a greater for the good, just like the wearing masks. We don't wear them for a while yet, but I think it's going to be for the good. But I'll go back to the first analogy and say that I think in time we will be seen as having good vision tonight and what we did. And for those folks that are upset, like I said, Facebook will be burning up. Even last meeting, there was a comment that said, we need to replace all the town council. Well, do it. Make sure that's clear. People that don't agree with what happens here, first of all, go vote. You know, the last election we had, and I'm on fire now. The last election we had for four awards, 
Out of a town with 13,000 people, we had about 400 that lived it. 100 people board. That's crazy. So if you don't like the way things do or go on in this building and with this council, then go vote. And I challenge you to run for a seat. I think we did the right thing. And I'm proud of how the vote went tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Councilman. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I think we did the right thing. Uh, it, and it's hard to do that. Everything I try to do as a council member uh, and, or any group that I'm a part of, I have two things that I go by. One, I try to do what's best in the long run, and I always try to do what's right. I also know that many times that is apparent, readily apparent to people. But I'll assure you that the truth will come out in the end. I'll assure you that our children and our children's children won't have to deal with this issue uh, in the same way. And we have made this possible by uh, making this decision tonight. Uh, I just don't think we need to keep holding on to things that aren't right. Uh, I'm, I'm, I, um, I respect everybody's opinion. I respect everybody who said. But I do believe in doing what's right, and I know there's something I can do uh, what's right tonight. I would like to change the subject a little bit and say that um, I'm very pleased. I talked to the town manager today about the industrial drive, what's going on out there. Uh, we have some new development that we've voted on, the council did. Uh, part of the reason why that's taking place because the council did offer some incentive. Uh, with the recommendation from the town manager. And that is, I, I was really shocked at how fast they're actually making this happen. But the good things, the good things are happen, happening as far as the residential, but we also uh, make some good decisions business-wise. I think it's about making the town, town better. I do think we are moving toward uh, improving the town in every way possible. And so I'm glad to be a part of that. And I want to thank the staff for the job that they do. Councilman Mayor. Well, the past couple of months have been very trying. I've tried to reach out to everybody that I've been able to. Just about everybody that has reached out to me and tried to invite them to a circle out at Commons. A couple of faces are familiar, some are unfamiliar. Um, I wouldn't wish what we did tonight on anybody. It's um, it, it's been a rough period, but I'm glad it's been. Councilwoman Ford. Um, I'd, like I'd like to say that I appreciate each and every one of you on this town council. You voted your conscience and your mind about the, the Confederate statue. Um, within time, certain things will heal. We have been moving in the right direction for the eight years I've been up here, and I wanted to continue to move forward um, as time go on, whether I'm up here or not. Um, I believe that my faith is deeply rooted in things and my um, the spirit dwells in me will convict me day and night if I don't do what's right. So it's not about, I just want everyone to know it's not just because I'm black, an African American female, um, that I voted the way I did. I voted because it's wrong. I don't want to offend anyone. And the words, if you, if you offend the least of them or just one of them, of them you have been, the Lord, I don't want to have an answer about that to any, you know, when my time comes. Um, I'd like to further thank um, my Toro PD. It's quite in the neighborhood. But I do have a couple things that I'd like to give you, Chief, for code enforcement. Um, go and check on 
have complaints on two houses on Carolina Avenue. One of the houses is the one that um, been burnt, the lady, uh -huh. and I think the same owner owns it. I won't call the name, but I do know who owns it. Um, we had to be diligent about that the property over there. That's my ward, and as we have elsewhere in town, we uh -oh. be sure that the property owners do what they're supposed to do. No one wants to live like um, what I saw. I took pictures, so um, I will, I'll give that information to you at the end. I want to thank you all for what y'all are doing. All the rest of the town will talk with people. I saw my trucks out when we had the heavy storm. That apartment right in. <laughs> <laughs> I saw my trucks out. I sound so uh, the People come checking debris, checking my drains, I think. I was checking water meters. I was very excited about what I saw you guys were out there. And I'm thankful that you went to help other small towns uh, that had issues. So that shows togetherness and brotherhood and sisterhood. And, and thank all of you again. Councilman Jenkins. Oh. <laughs> Uh, I guess it was a pleasant evening because nobody shot anybody. So uh, I thank you and I thank the council, sir. Council Lord Bynum. Yes, um, I'd like to thank everyone on the council for giving such thought into this process. Uh, it was not easy. Um, a lot of feelings are tied up into this and, you know, we just got to move forward. And I was strong about it from the beginning, and I just hope that people in my ward understand that who we're in opposition to, that there are tough decisions we have to make, but at the end, I do represent the entire town of Tarboro. So that's what I have to do, and I have to make decisions that may be unfavorable, but in the end, we'll come together on this. And I appreciate you guys for what you do. I really do. It is time to make the change, and the time is now. That's it. Thank you. Tom Burnett. 